But in the meantime, we have a new project, $20 BMW build, LT edition. LT edition. So Frank picked up this car from a guy on the Facebook group. Yep. That was, what was it? It was just no motor. Uh, yeah, it was a roller that he had swapped. He was, I think he was building a drift car out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and he had two of them, I believe. Or, no, he had a 240 and the BMW. Okay. And he had to move. So he just had to get rid of the fire sale. So yeah. I remember him posting it up and he was like, first guy to bring us 20 bucks and come take it. <laughs> we thought he was full of crap, but yep. Frank, I think uh, you yeah, cashed that I cashed up with $20, $20 and he said, you have a week to pick it up. Yep. So I'm in Houston and he was in Dallas and the following weekend, I went out there, picked it up and brought it back. And it's I think that was like two years ago. I it's been sitting. It. So I take it from my buddy's house because he has some land and I parked it there. I wasn't sure what to do with it. It just kind of like, well, I'll build another one eventually because I felt like the white car was getting to a point where it was too race car-ish. We're kind of toning it down now. But yeah. So I just like, I kind of miss the street build I had when I dated the white car. So with the LT platform starting to kind of make a new wave now, 10 years later, yeah, to uh, we decided to, you know, throw an LT in this. And at the same time, I kind of had this deal come up. I work at a shop, work for a factory, and we swapped an engine in a 2020 Sierra. And he wanted us to swap in a low mile engine, so we did that low mile engine and trans. And he just said, Give me something for the old pullout. And I was like, I'll give you a thousand. <laughs> Alright, cool. So I got a complete 6.2 with a 10 speed transmission that does shutter. That was the one part of that. The transmission did have some shutter issues, but I put a 40,000 mile engine in it with transmission and that one has shutter issues. <laughs> so, but man, this thing came pretty set up already. It had a cam kit, but the cam was damaged when the lifter got damaged. The cam was in there. Yeah, the original cam was in here. I don't know so, if you can tell, but. It got damaged. I think it's this one. Right here. So I went, I went on Facebook because the whole series is supposed to be like as budget as I can make it. So granted, you might not come across a deal like I did, but they're out there. What did you end up paying for the pull-up? So I paid a thousand dollars for a long block got L87 with a 10 speed. But it's, it was a four-wheel drive 10 speed. Okay. So I'm having a Caesar converted to a two wheel drive set of So a thousand dollar long block in trans that yes needed work. Yes. I did spend another like eight hundred bucks just rebearing it, re ringing it, yeah. going through it. Yeah. The bottom end is still is still stock, yes. but went through and probably gave it a quick home. Yeah, quick home. Um, new stock bearings. rings and new bearings? Yes. Did got the rings because they're a really tight from factory and I do probably plan on spraying a uh, hundred 50 shot or something. But yeah, so this was a 20, 2020 L87. It had 105,000 miles and it had a BTR cam in it. It had dual springs. And so I went on Facebook and I found a BTR 225 cam. Some guy who also worked at a shop was getting rid of some stuff and he had this cam and a GPI high ram cam. And he's like, you gotta buy both of them for $200. And I was like, that's cheap. Yeah. <laughs> so I went, I met him, bought the cams, I hit up a friend of mine who was also looking for a cam. I said, hey, I had this GPI high ram LT cam if you want it, 100 bucks. And so I'm in that cam for 100 bucks. I have an LT2 intake. This was another Facebook store, right? Yeah. Um, LT2 with an LT5 bottle body with an adapter. Yeah, adapter. And, and it's already, already modded too. Yes. So the bottom is shaved. Yes. Got the brake booster fitting, so ready to go. Yeah, that came off a of Camaro. The intake is ported, the throttle body is ported, and the guy went to an MSD setup, and he was selling it for 200 bucks. And I could not pass it no. up. No, because the intakes were like 200 bucks. Yeah, so I hit him up, and he didn't answer for like a month. And then randomly one day, 
I was on my way up to Mike's and he hit me up. Hey, you still interested? I just saw the messages and you were the first one to hit me up. So I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can send you the money right now. And he's like, okay, where are you located? So anyway, he ended up being close to Mike, which I was headed that way anyway. He was in Magnolia. And I met him, got the intake. So we have everything we need to put the long block together. And I'm gonna get the trans converted to a drive. You had the heads gone through too. The heads gone through. Yeah. I got grabbed from the truck. Yeah. So they were what? Just they were mildly ported and yeah. Up. So I had my buddy just mildly port them mm -hmm. and just deck it. I don't think I built them. Was that included in the freshen up price or how much did you pay for heads? No, that was five fifty. Okay. So yeah, about eight hundred and five fifty. Yeah. yeah. Freshening up the long block. Yes. Yep. So yeah, he did that for me and pretty much ready to assemble it now. So we're gonna put it together. I'm gonna bring a trans when that's converted. I'm gonna order the converter and we'll make it a long block with trans and then we'll sit it in the car yep. with a harness and try to get it running. Yeah, day. and then it's gonna be the beginning of the, the swap series of Frank's original yes. car, except this one's gonna be black and LT. Yes. So we're gonna get it all in there, go over everything from start to finish with the blue car. We got all the LT stuff all basically figured out yeah. you know, mm -hmm. as far as wiring, AC integration, all the new parts are done. So Yeah, and luckily I was able to score some Camaro front accessories uh, yep. from a buddy as well. Because yeah, the accessories are going to use Camaro factory stuff. So this is the alternator bracket that goes down here. Yeah, and then and you then need a the Camaro water pump and yeah, a damper. So yeah, we're going to put it together. My goal for this thing we're figuring out something on the headers, right? We're working on LT headers, okay. but on this one, we're going to be using something modified off the shelf. Yeah, so we're going to use some off the shelf headers that are modified to yep. fit. And then my goal is somewhere in the 500 range, yeah. 480, 500 wheel. And then see how that goes, and then probably add a 150 shot on it. Yep. And, and with the 10 speed, it should be around. Yeah, I mean, my car that made. 460 something. Oh, yeah, well, that felt. <laughs> it was great. It was, it was fantastic. Now, the so. funny part is, the first time I did the white car, I drove Mike's the OG, uh, the OG car. Yeah, the I drove the OG car. When it was a manual. Feet. Yeah, it was a six-speed yeah. manual, and he had just brought it to the dyno with a seventy-eight, seventy-five. Yep. And I drove it, and I was like, "Oh yeah, this you is gotta build one." <laughs> <laughs> so then I bought the white car. We swapped it, yep. did that, and then years later, he brought the LT blue one. Yep. And we finished dynoing it, and I drove it, and I was like, "Oh yeah, this is <laughs> here we are again." That car was a six speed, so I'm very excited to see how the 10 speed is yeah. gonna run in it. But the LTs make so much power, like dollar for dollar compared to the LS. Yeah, they're a little, a lot of people are still kind of scared of the LT with a DI, and most of the time, like you pick up a LT pullout. Yeah, it's 3,000 to 6,000. Yeah, there's a the quite, of, quite a bit range. Yeah, and depending on what, what is out of and Miles and all that kind of yeah, stuff. and people were kind of scared away by that too yeah. because they see this for six hundred dollar LS long block yes. four eight or five three. And they're like, oh, you know, I'm gonna finish this swap for a grand. Yeah, and it's just not the case. Like, there's a lot of parts that go into it. Yes, it, and the benefits of this LT use a lot of stock. Yeah, stuff. use a lot of stock stuff. Intake, yeah. accessories, injectors, fuel system. Yeah, you I know, know if you got to pull out out of the 2014 and up truck, like everything's good. Yeah. You don't have to worry about worn out starters or any of that mm -hmm. stuff. So not getting nickel and dimed on the LS side, which is still fine. But you know, if you spend $4,000 on a pullout, it usually comes with a lot of the Yeah, I mean, primarily you need an oil harness. pan, a harness, <laughs> yeah. and my swap kit and bolt it in, you yeah. know? And then the usual stuff with any swap drive shaft, deal with the shifter, mm -hmm. but you know, you're not, Searching down gaskets, accessories, yeah. trying to find a cathedral port car intake that are like yeah. impossible to find, or people want, you know, eight hundred dollars for an LS six intake now. It's yeah. crazy. They so just keep going around. You can buy an LT two, yeah, on Amazon for two hundred dollars. Still get them. So LT stuff is cool. So, yeah. so we'll put this together. We'll do a build series on it. Obviously, show when we put it together, how we wire it, going on the dyno, all that fun stuff. Yeah. Drivability. See how it drives on the street. All the cam integration, AC. Yeah, cam integration. Yeah, with the new cam box. Um, so yeah. we're gonna put this together, and then we'll be back when we're done with the motor assembly, and we'll show you the car, show you the trans getting put together, yeah. and all that, and all the swap kit, all the new parts. So. Yep. Yeah. All right. Cool.
start installing the accessory drive for the LT. This is the new front plate. It takes the Sandin AC compressor and the BMW power steering pump. We're gonna get it bolted up with the spacers up top and down low to the cylinder head and the front cover. We have our main bolts on the front accessory bracket with our two and a half inch spacers. Get that bolted to the cylinder head. You're gonna to wanna to tighten the cylinder head bolts up first. And then you're going to want to check the length of the spacer that goes down here between the timing cover and front plate. You wanna make sure that it fits right in. Um, you may have to add a washer, which is included in the kit because there's some variation in front cover thickness. So when you go, go ahead and tighten down this lower bolt, you're going to verify the spacing for this, for this spacer right here. This is tight on the cylinder head. You do not want this plate to pull in towards the block when you tighten this. So if it does, um, you'll need to use one or two of the washers in the kit. Make sure everything sits up square. And the front plate. Then when you tighten this up, you should see that that front plate doesn't want to pull in. It does need to add another washer. So that is good. And next we're gonna have our idle, idle Can't use, my, can't use my words. Next, we're gonna bolt up our idler pulley with the large one inch diameter spacer it goes on the backside. Stepped spacer from the pulley kit goes on the front. This one's difficult to get to with the water pump in place. So you can go ahead and do it first. You're gonna be bolting up your AC compressor here first because this bolt is difficult to get to with the pulley in the way, but we're putting this on here for demonstration. All right, we finished up installing our accessory drive bracket, the additional idler, and the rest of the factory LT1 Camaro accessory drive with the water pump, alternator mount tensioner, and harmonic balancer. So this system works with the factory LT1 Camaro accessories, and then the sand and AC compressor, and the BMW power steering pump. We also went ahead and installed our swivel LT1 water neck. This works out really well because the orientation of the factory neck makes it very difficult to get to the radiator that's on the upper driver's side in the chassis. So we're all set here. Got the LT2 intake bolted up here. All the coils and valve covers are taken care of. The motor is assembled and ready to go. So then as soon as Frank makes it back over here with the chassis, we're gonna get this thing hooked up to the transmission, get it back in the chassis and start part one of our LT1 swap series. Catch you guys next time.